Hello folks. In previous sections, we have seen what kind of options are available on Git and GitHub. How does it help us to manage our code? In this section, I'm going to discuss how we can use all those options together to secure our code on Git or GitHub. To demonstrate this project, I'm going to use a car rental Java project, which helps us to understand how exactly do we work in the real world with Git. Let's assume that I'm a DevOps engineer and my manager called me and asked me to create a repository. While I'm creating a repository for our clients, we are going to follow these steps. In the real world, we are going to set up private repositories most of the cases. Even for this project also, I'm going to create a private repository. Next, I'm creating three branches. One is prod, UAT and dev. Here, I'm not using master branch. As you know, by default, we get a master branch, but I'm deleting that branch and I will use prod, UAT and dev branches. And I will add team members as collaborators for this repository. In this project, I'm going to use four developers. So four developers, I need to add as a collaborators. But to add them as a collaborators, they should have a GitHub account. Next, enable SSH based authentication. I'm going to enable passwordless authentication so that they can able to push their code onto the GitHub account without any issues. Next, to protect the prod and UAT branches. So here we are creating three branches. Developers can push any kind of code on dev branch, but not on UAT and prod branch. If they are pushing or checking in any code on UAT or prod branch, it should be in working stage. So that always my UAT and prod branches contains working code. One approval is needed to check in code onto UAT branch or UAT environment and two approvals needed to check in code onto prod branch. So this we are going to add with the collaborators. I have already discussed about collaborators in our previous sections, right? Next, build and deploy should be successful before checking the code onto UAT as well as prod. Which means that, assume that I have pushed my code onto the dev environment. From dev environment, I will build and deploy it on the dev system. Once it is successful, then only I can check in my code onto UAT. Similar way, on UAT also, I will do build and deploy. If it is successful, then only I will check in my code onto prod. That is how we can make sure that working code is moving on to the production. So these are the steps I'm going to take care while creating repository for my cab booking or taxi booking application. Let me show you this one in the diagram. Before going to discuss further, I have a quick update about my new course. I have launched a new course called Git and GitHub for DevOps engineers. If you wish to enroll for this course, I'm going to give the URL of this course in the description of this video along with a coupon code. With that coupon code, you are going to get this course for either 360 rupees or 10 dollars or 10 euros. Even the video which you are watching at this moment also from the same course. Thank you. Let's go back to our discussion. So this is GitHub account and as I said, we have four developers. Developer one. My laptop is the developer one system from starting. We are using my laptop as a developer one system, right? And a developer two system in AWS account. We have created a Linux system that we are using it as a developer two system and a developer three and a developer four. I have created two new Amazon Linux systems. Those we are going to use it as a developer two and a developer three systems. Let me show you that. So this is my developer one system. I can open git bash over here and start working on my cab booking Java project. Next thing, as I said, I have created developer 2, developer 3 and developer 4 systems on AWS console. So developer 2 is going to work from this system. Developer 3 is going to work from this system and developer 4 is working from here. I have already logged into these systems. Let me show you. So this is developer 2 system. I named it as a dev2. This is developer three system. I named it as a dev three. This is developer four system. I named it as a dev four. So each developer is going to work on their own independent systems. But in this demonstration, I will act as a all these developers. Next thing we need to create a private repository, right? So here we are going to create a private repository in our GitHub account. 
Once it is created, we are going to create three branches. Those are production, UAT and dev branches. Next, our developers are going to give their SSH keys with me so that I can add their SSH keys in my GitHub account so that they can able to communicate with my repository without any credentials. So they generate SSH keys and share with me so that I will enable their passwordless authentication or SSH based authentication. And also I'm going to protect prod and UAT branches. Okay, so these two will be protected and whenever you want to check in code from dev branch to UAT, one approval is needed. Similar way from UAT to prod, two approvals are needed. So I will add these users as a collaborators over here, but these users should have the GitHub account. Rather than that one, for developer 2 account, I am going to use Vyankil. For developer 3, I will use Velaxi so that they can able to approve while pushing our changes onto production branch. So this is how we are going to set up our environment so that we can able to secure our code and also we will make sure that only working code will be available on prod and UAT and developers can do any kind of activity on dev branch. That's all for this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to set up all this environment. Thanks for watching and see you there.